You too. What's up? What's up? It's Gucci and I'm back. Gucci gang, Gucci gang, Gucci gang, Gucci. I know y'all, I know. Don't beat me up. Don't beat me up. It's been a long time since I got on here and made a YouTube video. I've been over on Facebook doing my Facebook lives every Friday. So if you haven't already followed me on Facebook, follow me on Facebook. Gucci Crafts is the page just like here on the YouTube channel. And every Friday I am live on Facebook. I promise to try to get you, give you more YouTube videos. Um, but I have a really exciting one tonight. I am going to be going over how I make my facial mask toppers. So I made a post on Facebook with my little packaging for my sublimation mask. And I got so many inboxes. How do you make it? How do you make it? How do you make it? This is the front. And this is the back. This is what it looks like when it's all put together. Um, the mask I have already come with the back, so I don't have to purchase the back. Um, I am doing a buy-in for the children's mask and adult mask, which I will leave a link um, in the description box if you would like to go ahead and get in on that buy-in. The buy-in will close once we get to 2,000 masks, so jump on it fast if you want to be a part of the buy-in. So the supplies that we are going to need um, to make this topper, remember we're not doing anything with the bag, we're just making the topper, are going to be our computer. I'm going to be using Silhouette um, Studio, the business edition. You can use, excuse me, you can use, <clears throat> excuse me, you guys. I ain't even editing that out either. <laughs> you can use um, Cricut Design Space to design these as well. Um, you can also, um, if you have Silhouette Studio Business Edition, you can design in there, save it, and take it over into Cricut to have Cricut cut it for you. Um, I, in particular, wanted to make sure that I got a lot of these um, on a sheet because I'm selling a lot of these sublimation masks. So I bought some 13 by 19 which uh, Silhouette Studio, even the free edition, will allow you to download up to print 13 by 19. So even if you don't have the business edition, you can design in Silhouette Studio. If you go to their website, which I'll link below, silhouetteamerica.com, and you can download uh, the free version of Silhouette Studio in order to be able to print out 13 by 19 if you have a wide format printer, either the Workforce 7720, Workforce 7710, or any other wide format printer. So your printer has to allow you to be able to print um, 13 by 19, and you can use the Silhouette program to get that 13 by 19. Um, if you don't have a wide format printer, you can use this same paper, but in eight and a half by 11. Um, this is the Epson Premium Presentation Matte Paper. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful colors that it gives you. A nice, clean, pristine print. Um, especially with my Epson, it does work well with the HP as well, because I have an HP printer as well that I've tested this paper out on. This is going to be, um, you can find this on Amazon, the 13 by 19 and the eight and a half by 11. Um, it is already in my Amazon storefront. I will also link that in the description box below. That description box is going to be lit, y'all, so y'all better go down there and check it out for the supplies. Um, so again, I use a 13 by 19 sheet because it gets me eight um, mass toppers per sheet. And basically what I do is just, I just cut it. Um, these are, this is two of them that are um, cut. And so you cut it into four sections and then you get these little sheets and then you can go ahead and just cut it out. Again, if you do it on the eight and a half by 11, if you have a Cameo machine, Cameo will cut two of these for you at a time. If you're going, if you want Cricut to cut it, it only is going to cut one at a time. And that is why um, I started to just go ahead and cut them by hand. It's a lot faster um, and it's a simple square. So you can't really mess it up too much, right? And then, you know, with your box around, if it's not all the way even, you can kind of snip it and make it even, and it'll still look really good, okay? So, without further ado, let us go ahead and share my screen so that we can start designing, y'all. Um, also... Um, I have on my website at www.iteachcrafts.com, I have a template that you can use if you don't want to build from scratch. There is a template on the website that you will be able to use. I have it in SVG form, and then I have two different JPEGs, and we actually just went by it 
have my watermark on top of it. So this is the black version. And I also have one where the background is white and the words are black. And you can go ahead and add your logo there. Um, you can add your Instagram here, your Facebook or phone number, whatever it is for the stay in touch. Um, and then you can do it that way you can add whatever you want over here on the side i added you know call or text to order on mine and i left the thank you for your order with the svg version of it the only thing that is on there is your barcode and the production 2020 which you can take out and add your own words on there with the svg um but i wanted you to be able to have a document where you could change the color of your barcode and the colors of the production 2020 or remove them um, and then also the care instructions, the, those are there on the SVG and you can actually change the color to those as well. Um, so you again, you can use these files inside of Cricut, inside of Canva, inside of Microsoft Word, inside of Silhouette, um, wherever you would like to use them. Okay, so what I have done is I have some of the elements that are going to go um, on my mask already set here like this is the picture that you can scan to get directly to my instagram you can use that you could just go to instagram go to name tag um and it will give you the actual picture of your name tag on your cell phone screen and all you have to do is go ahead and take a screenshot of that save it to your phone and then just upload it to your computer this is the barcode um, background off our foundation, I could say. If you buy the file, that file $6, by the way, it will be in the description box as well. Um, or you can just go to Google and find a barcode and do whatever you would like with it. I try to make sure that in the file, I give you guys um, all the little bitty elements that you will need in order to create the mask cover to a uh, mask topper. Um, I have my logo already here. I already have um, this typed out. This is instructions on how to actually wear um, your mask. So I'll kind of just already type those out. Also, this is um, from the CDC um, on homemade mask, uh, on homemade cloth face coverings. I took this directly from the CDC's website, kind of paraphrase it a little bit to make it smaller so that um, the file wouldn't be so big with all of these words, especially bringing something over um, into Cricut. And so without further ado, we're going to get started and I'm going to show you how um, I make the topper. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to get a square I'm going to go ahead and draw out this square. And again, like I said, these can be made in Cricut. Um, of course, in Cricut, you don't have to um, copy the square, you know, draw, excuse me, draw out the square. Um, you can just select it and it'll give you a square. Doesn't matter really what size squares you start out with because we're going to size this down to six by four. Okay. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to go, um, six wide and then we'll be four long right <clears throat> four long and six wide we're making it four long because when we fold it over we wanted to have that um two inches okay this particular bag is um a five by seven bag so with going six long i just went a little bit over um what the original bag size was to give me a little bit of room to maneuver and i know that i didn't want it to be super big because i still wanted my mask to be able to be displayed so i said okay well i want it to be at least two inches on each side which means that when i'm designing it my box has to be four okay so we just make the first box there and i'm gonna grab um my second box just make it almost as big it doesn't doesn't really matter the size again because we're going to size it down um, to six by four. So I'm just going to make sure it's a pretty, pretty healthy size in there. And then what I'm going to do is just highlight it. I'm going to center horizontally and center vertically. So that way my box, everything is completely centered there on my box. And then I'm gonna go ahead and highlight them. And I'm gonna make them six by four. Oh, not both of them, sorry, shoulda grouped it. Hold on, ah, gotta group it. Now we can make a six by four.
All right, so now we have um, our six by four design. Another way that you can get the um, box around, and of course you can decide how much of a margin you want on either side. If you want this one to be thicker, if you want it all to be um, the same size, it's completely up to you. All you need to start this out is two squares, okay? So now what I'm gonna do is I'm just, now that I've sized them to where I want them to be, I'm gonna just ungroup them again so that I can add in the color that I want. So I'm gonna switch it up a little bit from my actual design. And I'm in my um, fill panel here and I'm going to the fill pattern uh, within Silhouette. Right, and so I filled my outer box and now I'm gonna click and fill my inner box. And I want that to be, oh, clicked on the wrong one. Gotta get that line. I should have filled my inner box first, what I should have did. I'll move it down so I can get to it. No problem. Right, make sure that our line color matches up. I'll be making this into a JPEG, so the line color won't really matter. If you're going to make it into a PNG, which is just another form of picture, um, then you want to make sure that you don't have lines. I've noticed that bringing um, PNGs into Cricut from Silhouette with the line color added really makes the line stand out, and I don't really like that look. So I'm just going to go and oops. I don't know if I just did this already, me talking, but I want to just make sure that it's back the way it needs to be. Then I'm going to go ahead and group it. I like to work all outside of the media square, so you'll see me um, over here on the side a lot. And I'm actually going to move some of my elements over to give myself a little bit more room here on the side to design. I don't know, it's just something about this gray area that I like better than designing on the white. Now I'm actually gonna blow this up and then we'll resize it when we're done, just so that you guys are able to see my screen. Okay, now I want, of course, the top and the bottom of my topper. So I can do this two ways. I can get a square and I can make the square really thin um, to create my line, or I can draw a line and play around with the line thickness, okay? So I particularly like the line. So I'm just gonna go down here, gonna hit my shift button after I select my line, and then I'm gonna draw my line out. Hitting the shift button helps you keep your line straight so you know that the line's gonna go straight across. I'm already in my line style panel, so I'm gonna go over here and I am going to change the thickness of my line. I'm just gonna make it as thick as I would like it. This one is at five points, okay? I like that my line is rounded on the end. You can make your line square or whatever the case you may be. Also in silhouette, you can change the style of your line. Um, you can make it dotted like that if you want. And let's try the dotted. I kind of like that, okay? Um, and so now I want to make my line to go straight across. Of course, my line can't be black um, because then we won't be able to see it. So I think that I like this black, blue, and bright pink. That's just my color. I love it. So I'm just going to click on this pink color. I'm going to make my line pink. I'm going to just bring my line up. Make sure I don't have to send forward. Oh, come on, stop it. There's my line. And this line is here. Um, you can always delete your line if you want after you've done your designing. I kept my line because um, it helped me know exactly where to actually fold. And then I think that it made a really good addition to the design itself. Again, the line is optional if you use the SVG version of the templates I have available. So I'm just making sure that that's grouped. We want to make sure that the two squares are grouped first. Now we want to highlight it all and we're going to do the same thing. We're going to center vertically and center horizontally. Um, centering horizontally will put the line directly in the middle so that we know that we're in half of the box. I'm going to go ahead and highlight that now. 
and I'm going to group it just so that these things do not move around, okay? So now that I've done that, I can begin to design um, the front of my mask. So I can use, you know, any font that I want. I'm going to go over here and I'm just going to type out facial mask. And then I'm going to go here and I'm just going to choose the font that I would like making it a little different from my original um, design. All right, because it's a script font, I'm gonna have to go and weld. Now that I've welded that, I'm just gonna go ahead and make it a compound path so that my eye stays there. There we go. And now I can change the font to um, any color that I like. We're gonna stick with the hot pink. All right, we just changed our fill color and our line color. Ooh, that looks so nice. I love bright colors on black. I mean, it just like, ooh, come on, come with it. Come on with it. I love that. All right. Gonna go ahead and size my logo. Right, let's highlight this and make sure that we center it. Now that's centered just where I want it to be. Now we'll leave that ungrouped for a second, just so if we need to go back and do something after this point, we won't be ungrouping, 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 ungrouping everything. So at the bottom, I wrote, please wash your mask. Um, what did I write? Please wash your mask um, upon purchase. And at least once a week thereafter. And that's just a recommendation from the CDC. Oh, why did it give us capitals? Don't do me like that. Let's fix our spelling errors. And I'm just gonna go ahead. I don't know, I don't wanna align it center. I'm gonna zoom out a little bit so I can stretch this line out. So I'm gonna double click for my editing box and I'm just gonna stretch my line all the way out because I wanted to just go down across the bottom. And I wanna keep this, you know, as much as a statement as possible and I just fit it back to window so that um, um, we could really see it again. So I'm gonna use impact for this because impact is really bold. Hitting my editing box again so I can bring that back in. And then what I'm going to do is I'm gonna use my Doppler to find a blue color that's already within my glitter that I think is gonna pop out on the black just to keep everything coordinated. I think that one's really good. And we're gonna go change our line color. And you can actually have your line color and your um, color your color panel open at the same time. I'm, I'm choosing not to at this time to give myself a little bit more room on the board. All right, and that's just to make it a statement and now here we can be nice and say thank you for your order 
and I'm going to keep it coordinated. I'm going to do that the same font that we did the facial mask. So we're going to go over here. <clears throat> we're going to get that font. Remember, we have to weld our font. And then we're going to um, make a compound pad so everything sticks together. And we will go ahead and make that that pink color that is already in our um, facial mask writing. Or I might make it I might make it blue. Let me see how it looks against the pink line. Doesn't look too bad. Let me let me see how it looks blue. I actually like it better blue. I like it a little bit better blue. So we'll leave it blue like that. Um, on the other side here, you could either either leave it blank. When I was doing my mask, I kind of felt like something was missing over here. So I did add a call or text to order. Um, and I added um, my phone number. That's not something that you have to do. You can either add that there in this section, call or text to order, or you can just leave it blank. You don't even have to add the thank you for your order. You can leave that blank as well if you would like. Okay. so move this out of our way. Now we're getting ready to put to, to put together um, the back of our topper, the upper part of our topper. So this part is very, very important when you're doing this. You want to make sure that you rotate everything to 180 degrees because you want this top portion of the topper to be backwards. So if you look and how my top is, when you're looking at it, just head on, everything is upside down. And that's because when you get ready to flip it over, it will all look right side up to the customer and on your packaging, okay? So let's first go ahead and build our barcode. So I'm gonna go and just get a rounded uh, square because that's what Silhouette, um, does offer and it looks more like a barcode to me. And again, if you get the um, template packet that I have available on my website, which will be in the comments, then you will already have this element. Okay, so I just centered horizontally, centered vertically. I'm going to make it match, of course, with everything with our mask. That's the beauty of making it um, yourself. You can customize it. So we just sent that um, pink square back. Look at that, that is so pretty. And if we wanted to go even further, we could turn those um, into that pretty, pretty bright blue, which I think I will do. Oh, let's make sure this pink has a pink lining. All right, so we have that. We'll go ahead and group that. <clears throat> and we're going to just put that right down here. On my mask, I put production 2020. I mean, you could write anything over this, or you could simply leave it blank. You don't even really have to add the barcode. I just want it to be extra fancy, y'all, and make it look like you know it really came from the store, right? So what we're going to do is go to our rotation panel. And in Cricut, at the top bar, there is just um, a toolbar at the top that says rotation. And you can actually type in 180. So if you guys leave in the comments that you want me to do a video on how you actually accomplish this within Cricut, then just leave it in the comments. Let me know if I get enough comments and I'll do another video where I design the same exact thing in Cricut. It's just little nuances that are separate. So I'm just gonna hit that 180. It's gonna flip my barcode upside down. I don't have any words on my barcode, so it really doesn't matter really which way it went. Um, for this one, like I said, the one I did for my personal um, business, I did um, put production 2020 over it. All right. And we'll just size that just like that. All right, and I'm just sizing it to fit the actual product or the actual area. Um, this section here, 
This is going to be how to wear your mask properly. Um, I have that um, on the back and I actually put how to properly wear your new face mask. So here. Wear your new face mask. Oh, Lord, what did it pick the knife for? Don't you do that. I don't know why I did that. I'm just typing. Y'all didn't tell me. All right. Oh, we got to take that center of rotation off. Everything just popped up out of nowhere, honey. All right, let's scoot down. Um, I'm going to take this center of rotation off real quick, you guys. Sorry. Where is that? Where are you? Thank you. All right, there we go. Stretching it out so that I get a um, full line here. And then I'm going to go ahead and just keeping up with the same style of the rest of the mask. Let me make this a little smaller. So I can move this, then I will fit it back to the page. Oh, where'd you go, baby? There you go. Our little boxes help, but honey, they get up all up in the way. So we're gonna make that one pink. We'll do our line pink. I'm gonna get rid of that for a second. All right. I'm gonna bring this just to fit it over here. We'll go ahead and group it. Make this a little smaller. All right, we're gonna go to our transform panel. We're gonna rotate it 180 degrees, 180. I'm, I use the rotation. Of course, you could just use the little green um, button there at the top to rotate, but you never know if you're rotating evenly, if it's crooked. Um, and so if you use the rotation tool, just do it to 180 and you know that it's going to be exactly the way that you need it to be. If you notice, I go a little bit under the line and that's simply because we're gonna end up folding it over. And when we fold, I want you to still be able to see everything that I've worked hard to get on, get on here. Ooh, sorry, I have to sneeze, you guys. Almost sneeze, didn't come out. I ain't got the wrong though. <laughs> All right, so then our next portion, this, like I said, I took this from um, the CDC website. It's just some things that the CDC recommend. There was one thing on there about children under two um, not wearing the mask and then also, you know, not putting a mask on anybody that is um, unconscious um, or, you know, can't take the mask off off themselves. Um, I thought that that was a little important snippet to add, especially about the children, um, not um, under two, not wearing masks. All right, so I just simply changed the color to that just to coordinate with the other colors that we have on here. Again, that's the beauty about being, uh, about making it yourself. You can customize it exactly how you want it. Um, and that's with the SVG version um, within the template bundle allows you to do, you can make it your own or you can simply use the black or white one that I've done, um, which, you know, has all of the things that you're gonna see on here except for the um, logo, right? So everything's on there. 
except for the logo. So with this one, all you're doing is adding in your logo, adding in your Instagram or where they will follow you at. And then if you wanted to put call or text to order on the side, you could do that. Bam, you got your mask, okay? With the SVG also, um, you already have both the boxes, so you can just click on each one of those to change the color or do a pattern feel. So let's rotate this to 180. We'll take it up here. Oh, let's in front. All right, make it a little bit smaller. Oh, come on. Oh, Lord, and it made it that small. Undo. All right, so there's my CDC recommendations right there. Again, you do the SVG version, you can add whatever it is, you know, that you want um, onto your mask cover. These are the care instructions, machine wash only, no bleach, um, low heat dryer. I figured that I would add them. I mean, most, most, sometimes people will follow, you know, what you say as far as care instructions and sometimes they want, won't. That is just how customers work, baby. So we're gonna make this, I'm gonna just making sure that this is the same color pink, which I believe it to be. And we're gonna go ahead and group them. Try to size it down a little bit before I flip it. Going over here to my transform panel again, again, flipping to 180. It's even, it's not crooked. You know, I don't have to tilt my head to look at it to see if everything came over right. And again, you just want to rotate it up. You don't want to mirror it. If you mirror it, your words will actually be backwards this way. Rotating it, your words will read the right way once you flip it down. We're just going to bring that front. There we have our care instructions there. Now I can add um, either my scanner here to say stay in touch and make sure I don't have anything else in the back of there. Nopesy, nopesy, nopesy. And we're gonna rotate this one, 180. Forget, keep forgetting this in front. You want to bring front. And of course, the bigger you can get this scanner, the easier it will be for people to scan. Um, I would do a test run just to make sure that um, your code will actually um, scan if that's what you want people to be able to do. Or you can simply just type out your Instagram if you want, like use a little Instagram logo that you can get from Google as a PNG um, and bring it over. I was just trying to be extra with these. Okay. So I'm going to bring this one up just a little bit more. I don't want to be like solidly on the line. And then I'm just gonna put um, a in touch. And then this one, and to follow this, right? Retail is detail. So these little bitty details for things are very, very important. And we're gonna change this one too. And we will shrink it down. Make sure that we're going to weld it first, then make it a compound path, or you could group it. Um, I just, I make it a compound path because I just wanted to stay that way. Okay. 
I'm going to go back over here to my transform panel, 180. And I'm trying to make this very simple, even if you're not a Silhouette user and you go and download um, the free software, there's only a couple of buttons that you need to know your way around to be able to get this mask, to, um, mask topper done. And again, if you guys, if I get enough comments below to say, hey, can you show us how to design this in Cricut? I will also do a video um, designing this same thing in Cricut. The concept is going to be the same. Ooh. This should be at the bottom. And we're going to go ahead and flip this 180. And all you need for this Instagram scanner to work is um, for the phone to be able to read the Instagram logo and your name there. It doesn't need to scan the whole box. And I actually have some room to stretch this back out a little bit, just to take up a little bit of space. And again, you can add whatever you want to the barcode. I'm, I'm kind of sunny style like that. Like I add things to my barcodes, even when I make chip bags. I think that's like my signature for chip bags. I'll always add something um, to the barcode. I just feel like the barcode be lonely and blank over there. Right? So now that we have all this together, we're gonna go ahead and highlight everything and we are going to group it and now my friends we have a mask topper um, we can take this and we can go ahead and size it to the size we need which is six by four for the 5.7 um five, for the five by seven bag that i am using okay so you size this topper to the size of whatever bag it is that you are using, right? So if you're using a bag that you need it to be, you know, eight long and you want it to be six, um, uh, you want it to be three inches when you flip it over. Of course, you're gonna have to make it eight by six in order to get three inches on each side. Um, this one, like I said, this is a five by seven bag. Um, all my masks come with a bag, the children's mask and adult mask, if you get into the buy-in. Again, that buy-in will be linked down um, in the description box. We can go over, uh, I'm just going to select um, save selection, just because I have it selected, save to hard drive. I'm going to go ahead and save this as a JPEG. And we'll call it mask cover training. Just want to show you guys that you can bring this into Cricut as well. This is what the PN, um, excuse me, the SVG looks like, brought over into Cricut. I was kind of playing around with it, making sure that it came over correctly. Um, but you can come in here and change whatever you like, okay? So we're just gonna go, I'm just gonna upload rows. And we are gonna get, where is it? It should pop up. Here it is. All right, we're gonna open that. Always select complex, go continue. There is our mask cover that we've brought over successfully into Cricut. Cricut is going to cut it along that line there. We can go ahead and save it. And then once we upload it into Cricut, I don't know why Cricut just did that. Cricut's having some issues. Shouldn't come over like that. I didn't even click on that. Okay. Well, we can see that Cricut's having some issues, but it will come over into Cricut correctly. You see that it, it uploaded into Cricut correctly. We'll close out my Cricut. It may want to update something. I don't know. But 
Um, like I said, if in the comments you guys drop that you want me to do the video um, within Cricut, I will go back in and do another video for Cricut. Also, I'll have coming soon a video on how I make my sublimation mask. I'm going to try to get that video out um, tonight, if not tomorrow midday. I have some orders that I have to fill. So I took a little break from that to come in and do the video to show you guys how I actually um, make the face mask. And so I want to show you guys how I go about cutting it out. Very simple, you're just gonna cut the square. So we're gonna stop our share here for a second. And I have my mask. And, and this will show you too exactly why I leave the line. So I'm just guiding my scissor and just letting my scissor slide straight up. Try to keep my lines as straight as possible. Now I'm pulling the paper down onto the scissor. My square, see how quick that was to cut? Cricut, our Cameo would not cut it that fast for you. By the time Cameo is done cutting two of them, you'll already have four of them cut out. So sometimes going the old school way is the best way. Now that we have it folded, what you can do, and I'll kind of take this one apart for a sec, so I can put it back together later. I'm gonna stick this right here on top. Oh, it's back. Stick this right here on top of your mask. And there are several ways you can get this on. You can either use your stapler and staple each side. I have an elongated stapler that allows me to kind of get in there a little bit better. I don't know if I have to get, I have some staples in here, but you can also do this uh, with a regular stapler, stapler because this size bag is not too long. And I try to go evenly on both sides. There we are. The other way that you can get this on, and then the staples said they don't really affect any of the wording or anything like that on the back. You can still see through it. And you generally, I'll come down a little even um even lower than that, like right over the words. I was doing it backwards on that one, so I got a little high. I would generally be right over my words. So I use this bottom sentence as my leveler, make sure that I have everything level, but this is fine as well. Um, also, if you don't want your customers to see the staples, what you can do is you can use double-sided tape. Um, I have a double-sided tape that's actually in my Amazon store as well. If you look under crafting supplies, or it might even be under tape supplies. Um, but you can use the double-sided tape so that you don't actually see the staples. And of course, what you're going to want to do is double-sided tape this um, back piece, double-sided tape the front piece, stick the bag in between, and go ahead and press down. And then you'll have it double-sided taped and it'll look seamless and you won't even be able to see the actual staples, okay? So, comment, share, like. Um, if you wanna get in on the mass buy-in, the description is gonna be below. Make sure that you're following me on Facebook, following me on Instagram, Follow me on YouTube, subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. This video was helpful. Again, I will be trying to come back um, either later on tonight um, or um, late Monday with the video on how I actually make my sublimation mask. If you simply just can't wait that long, I do have a live video on Facebook that's from about three weeks ago where I did a Friday, we call, I call it Friday Night Live, where I did a Friday Night Live where I actually demonstrated from start to finish how I make the mask. I even press them with the heat press. So it's there for you. If you don't want to wait for it to be here on YouTube, go over to Facebook to my Gucci Crafts page. Spelt the same way my YouTube channel is spelled G U C C I Gucci Crafts C R A F T Z. Yes, honey. All right. So until next time, Gucci Gang, I love ya.
Bye.